Hi everybody, if you're watching this video, it means one thing's happened, the Wi-Fi has gone down in the room. Uh, and we wanted to still be able to do the demos to show you how the software works. Um, we've gone through the slides and some of the uh, Google training videos, but we want to do a little short demo with you as well. Um, we're going to cover two tools in this section, which is Google Trends, trends.google.com, and Google Scholar, scholar.google.com. So uh, those will get you to those addresses, trends.google.com and scholar.google.com. So we'll start with trends. Um, as we showed you in the slides, uh, Google Trends is very helpful for capturing a quick snapshot uh, of what's uh, popular on Google search and what people may be looking for and what kind of questions people are asking Google. Um, and unfortunately, it can't give us a spreadsheet of all of the data uh, that uh, it, we use, they use to, to build, build these graphics that are running in the background, uh, trying to download 3 billion searches uh, of data a day, or three, uh, three billion uh, pieces of search data a day, uh, isn't a very easy thing to do, but uh, it does give us a normalized number uh, that is calculated out of that uh, to give us a very good looking little, little graphic. And uh, as uh, we saw in the slides, there's always three uh, graphics that are up at the top of the page uh, off of trending subjects, Trump's first 100 days. Um, something kind of interesting here, I thought it was interesting that Arizona uh, and uh, New Mexico both had uh, health care as a uh, top topic, uh, most searched topic, um, rather than immigration, uh, which I thought uh, that would be a slam dunk for those two states. So, you know, sometimes you learn, get some really good insights into what people are looking at. Um, this little chart here shows uh, prom uh, uh, questions and prom uh, figures. Uh, it also uh, tells you if more people are asking, how do I ask a girl to prom than how do I uh, ask a boy to prom? Or, you know, how do, where do I buy a, a prom dress? Uh, types of questions. And they're fun, just kind of trendy little things uh, uh, to keep track of. Uh, very easy to embed uh, on a page. You can click on any of these uh, and click on embed. And it gives you a desktop uh, embed code and a mobile embed code. And again, it's all rights free as long as you have this Google Trends logo. Uh, on there as well. Um, but the real power of this tool, I think it exists in this top toolbar up here where it says explore topics. Um, I think that really gives us some good insight uh, into what we can do and what we can build. Um, so I'll show you real quickly how deep you can dig down with this. And, and uh, we'll type in Hillary Clinton's name first. I always select search term, which is the broadest of all of them. Um, this is uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton, is Secretary uh, of State. Um, I want the broader search term, Hillary Clinton, and I always compare her with the other broad search term, which in this case uh, will be Donald Trump. And you can add this up here, and you can add multiple search terms. Um, you can have several, in fact. We've uh, done everything from uh, all the shoe brands to uh, all the Kardashian kids uh, in here, and uh, you can find some really interesting insights. It always defaults to a worldwide search for the past five years on web search. Um, you can also search uh, by image search, Google News, YouTube, so if you want to see who is searching more, uh, who's being searched more on YouTube videos or in Google News or image search, uh, you could do that. Um, I'm going to stick with web search. Um, uh, instead of the past five years, let's narrow it down. Uh, let's do the past 12 months, but you can, you can actually go down to the last hour. Uh, you can also set it to custom range, time ranges too, uh, which is very helpful. Um, and we're at worldwide right now, and as you begin to see here, the red line, Donald Trump, is much higher, um, so peaks out on election day, um, and, you know, it, uh, uh, he had the lead, you know, quite a bit throughout the, the campaign here in the last few months. You might notice this little peak here on September 11th. Uh, Hillary jumped ahead of him. That's when uh, she uh, got sick at the 9-11 uh, uh, memorial event, uh, and it was a very widely searched term that day. People were searching for Hillary, asking questions like, you know, how sick is Hillary, how is Hillary, that type of thing. Um, so we saw her surge ahead slightly there, but, um, you know, then trailed uh, in search all the other times. Um, this is worldwide search. Um, and again, uh, we talked about the normalization, this little question mark where it says interest over time. Uh, it explains what that normalized number is, that zero to 100 number. It's not a full percentage, um, but it means, means that it was highly searched if you peaked out at 100. Um, doesn't mean it's 100% of all searches were on that topic, but a high volume. Um, click on Worldwide here in the upper left-hand corner, and you get different countries. 
And as you select the different countries and the little arrows next to them, you can get down to the province level, the state level, you know, whatever there happens to be um, in that area. So I've gone to United States, and I can select then a state. And let's do Arizona. And I've gone to Arizona, and I've selected a city. I'm going to select Phoenix. It gives you five or six cities in some areas. Sometimes it's two or three. Gives you maybe a border state city as well. So we can narrow it down now uh, to Phoenix over the last 12 months. Uh, here who, here's who was searched more, Donald. And it kind of reflects what we see uh, in the national figures, but it's a little more detailed. Uh, again, you can take and embed this, share it over your social media channels. It does allow you to download a CSV file of the data, but all it does is gives you these figures that when you hover over it, gives you the normalized number, the 31 and the 11. It doesn't give you total search numbers, uh, which would be nice if it did, uh, but trying to handle that volume of data uh, is difficult. Um, as you scroll down the page, it does give you related queries and other questions or things maybe people have asked about uh, that subject. Uh, again, you can embed this um, and uh, uh, you can have some different uh, uh, selections as well, um, either top or if it's rising or not. Uh, but when it topped out, what were they asking, that type of thing. Um, so again, a uh, helpful little tool here to compare uh, different trending subjects. Um, and uh, you can really get some nice little insights and understand your audience at a little different level and what they're asking uh, 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 Google about during a breaking news event. Um, another good tool for sourcing is Google Scholar, and it researches two different areas, or allows you to search two different areas. Uh, one, which is academic articles uh, in a lot of the academic trade publications. Uh, you can go in and search for uh, all kinds of different topics, voter redistricting, uh, and it'll list, uh, in this case, uh, academic articles um, with the headline, a little blurb, um, how many times it's been cited. Um, other articles related to it, which is nice. Um, you can save this yourself and go into your citations uh, then and uh, see if, uh, uh, you know, if you're building a lot of research on a certain topic. Um, it allows you to search by different custom time ranges. Um, it allows you to sort by date. Um, and one of the best parts of this, I think, is this little area right here where it lists the name of the author or authors uh, of an article. And when you select that, if you click on that person's name, it takes you to their individual publisher page. Um, and it typically will have a photo of them, a uh, list, uh, a mention of where, where they teach, where they're uh, doing their research at, um, what areas of expertise they have, immigration politics, this might be a helpful uh, uh, source. And then also, uh, if you can go to his bio page here, uh, it... Uh, will also give you some contact information, either email or anything like that. You can also follow these people to see anytime they publish, you'll get a little email update uh, in your alerts. Um, also with some of his other articles here, this is a great way to go through and find expert sources. Um, real easy way uh, to find people. Um, you can go to this David Lublin's uh, homepage, uh, find his email address, drop him a note, say, hey, can I do an interview with you? So. A uh, real easy, quick and dirty way to do some quick sourcing as well as some great research. You're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, you also have the case law selection over here, uh, which you click click on case law, and you can get down to the federal court level, Indiana courts, because I'm in Indiana right now as I'm doing this, or you can go through and select what court you want, uh, and it lists several for each state, um, Supreme Courts, Appellate Courts, uh, Court of Appeals, things like that. Uh, and again, this is uh, for case law um, and not necessarily criminal law. So we'll do voter uh, redistricting. Uh, and then here's some of the different cases. I can change it back to anything before 2016 and narrow down my range. So that's scholar.google.com. Um, if you are uh, an academic and you want to be listed uh, in here, um, check with the publication uh, that you uh, are writing for. Many times they have a, a feed that will uh, push them right in here. Or you can Google uh, Google Scholar uh, publication tools uh, and it has a little page on the site uh, that will uh, walk you through the steps uh, to be published in Google Scholar. So if you want to have your own home page, if you're a, a doctorate who's done a lot of research and you want to be published and have it searchable by Google uh, uh, Scholar, which Google Scholar is great. It just saves you so much time rather than doing a random Google search. 
Um, you can get alerts on certain topics. Uh, I uh, would uh, have you probably get those in a summary format, so you're getting one email a day instead of several. Um, and you can also collect these in citations um, uh, and keep a little library of uh, searches that you've done and articles you've found. It'll narrow down your search time. So that's it for Google Scholar and Google Trends.